Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano catch-up where every Friday I look back at the main news items events within the Cardano ecosystem that caught my eye this week. So we had Cardano 360, the contingent staking debate, some updates from IOG, a few different project updates, a few other bits as well. Timestamps will be below. Get value, please do share it out. I really do appreciate it. Give the video a like, comment questions or anything missing down below. Let's jump into it. Starting out with a quick look back at the channel this week. So only two videos this week. I got started on the series that I'm going to make a weekly show going forward. So every Monday I'm going to put out a video like this. Looking at the top gainers and the top losers on Cardano. So looking at Cardano native assets and seeing what are the tokens that have gone up the most over the last seven days and the ones that have gone down. And diving into it to try and see what are the reasons behind it. So hopefully that will help people with their research on Cardano native assets as well. We had the weekly live stream as well. Myself and Paddy were on on Wednesday night. We do this every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. UTC. Talking all about the latest Cardano updates, taking questions from anyone who can join us live. It's always great to have people there live to ask questions and get involved in the conversation as well. And hopefully they are of value to people out there. Moving on then, we had Cardano 360 yesterday. So we had Tim on and Tim was joined at the start by Nigel and Kevin. So Kevin Hammond and Nigel to talk all about the recent hard fork, what that means, cross-chain compatibility, but they also got into talking about the future of Cardano and on-chain governance, talking about the members-based organization, and it all kind of boils down to SIP 1694. So a SIP on Cardano is a Cardano improvement proposal. So 1694 is all about governance, on-chain governance, and this is part of the Voltaire era for Cardano on the roadmap. So this one next week as well, there's a workshop in Colorado. So that I've seen some prominent members from the community have been invited out and they're all getting together to try and figure out what should be in SIP 1694, how it should be implemented on Cardano to bring on chain governance. So going forward, then any changes or any improvements that happen on Cardano would have to go through on chain governance. So the community would get involved and it would be the community that decides what gets involved and what gets built for Cardano. So I'm looking forward to seeing more on that. There was talk of it coming this year. I'm not sure if we will get it this year when the SIP hasn't been finalized yet, but we'll wait and see. And once I get updates on that, you can be sure I will include them in some of these videos. Next up, we had updates about Project Catalyst there. After that, we had Alex on from Lace Wallet. So Lace Wallet is the wallet being built by IOG. It's an all-in-one wallet for Cardano. Talked about going to mainnet, but no dates on that just yet. Then we had Ken on from Meld. So Meld is a DeFi protocol lending and borrowing on Cardano. Also going cross-chain as well. Talked about being on the private testnet, gave some feedback on that. Waiting to go to public testnet, didn't give a date on that, but we are hoping to see that fairly soon. And when it is there, I'll be able to dive into that one as well. Talked about the wallet that they have built that will be a multi-asset wallet as well. It will You will be able to use Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, BSC, Avalanche, and maybe more chains added in there over time. Talked about a partnership with multi-chain, so they will be able to have a bridge in there to bridge from one chain to the other. Then we had Nils on from Imperative Lang, I think was next. Yeah, so Nils was on to talk about Imperative Lang and some of the features and benefits of that. So it's great to see alternatives out there for building on Cardano, and Imperative Lang is offering one of them solutions. Then we had Sebastian from DC Spark. So Sebastian's been on the channel here a few times was on recently as well and he was talking about what the latest is with dc spark sidechains l2s and the big narrative that is building up there especially with what happened with coinbase this week now they wouldn't have known about coinbase when they recorded for this show but coinbase really highlights where where the industry is starting to turn going forward and we'll touch on that later in the video so i think that was yeah we actually had updates from shahaf about jed but that was the video they showed earlier in the month i think i've covered a lot of that and i have a few updates on jed to come up now in a second and that was about it then from Cardano 360 this month. So moving into the Jed updates. So 
We heard during the week that the minimums on Jed are going to be reduced. So coming down from 5,000 down to 1,000 and the burn is going to go from 1,000 down to 200 and Shen as well having reductions. This one here, the operational fee being reduced from 100 ADA down to 25 ADA is the biggest one for me really because especially when you're reducing the minimums, if you didn't reduce the operational fee, then 100 ADA would be 10% of the mint the minimum mint of 1000 so it's good to see that reduced and in time that will become a percentage as well so like the 1.5 percent the 25 ADA will become a percentage as well they wanted that in version one but it wasn't possible some technical reasons that meant they couldn't include it in version one so just when we're on the topic of Jed something I'm not going to read too much into but I'll mention because lots of people asked about it was with everything that happened with BUSD we covered that last week Binance have said they're looking into decentralized stable coins and Shahaf did mention that they are pitching and discussing decentralized stable coins with Binance but now whether they would look into Jed right now in its early stages and try and endorse that I really don't know and I wouldn't have much expectation on that because it wouldn't benefit Binance so generally bigger companies like that will look to get involved with something that will help themselves as well even though it is decentralized but if anything solid comes out on that you can be sure I will bring the updates here then we move on to contingent staking and we won't touch on this too long I will put a link to this one down below for anyone who wants to listen to the replay this was contingent staking debate with Charles hosted by Dumpling and Rick McCracken and there was lots of members from the community on to give their opinions as well on why contingent staking is good or why it's bad and different different perspectives on it and it's great to get these types of perspectives and hopefully for me hopefully it educates people on the outside that don't really know what's going on with the situation or why someone would be so for it or against it this was kind of more people giving their opinions rather than much debate on it there wasn't much counter arguments against people's opinions on it maybe we could do a round two where people come in and they start to really get into it and counter people's opinion not not to come in and say you're wrong because of this but flesh out some of the reasons that are there and why some people are so pro cs coming in and then why people are on complete opposite sides of the spectrum as well things like this will become very important when we do have on-chain governance and that's one positive thing i would say out of the whole contingent staking debate it really has split the community in some cases but it has also highlighted the importance of having on-chain governance so the community can decide where the future of Cardano lies so when we get there these types of debates and discussions will be a lot more important to help educate people before they can actually go and vote themselves for the future of Cardano then moving on to some project updates so we have Liquid Finance they released their audit report this week so you can go in and check that out I'll show you in a minute they also said that the auditors looked at the security issue last week where they stopped the chain due to a vulnerability being discovered and have come to the conclusion that no user funds were lost no one exploited the issue so that's good to see anyway if you look at the audit report this is the summary here of the issues that were found there was a decent few critical issues found the only critical one not fully solved yet is decentralization that's partly resolved and in time hopefully we'll see that one solved as well some of the major issues the major issues are all solved medium issues a few of them still not fully solved but these types of ones aren't something that can generally let access to user funds or anything like that as always anytime you get involved with any protocols then you always give up custody of your funds always brings in some risk for the user getting involved it's definitely something i'm going to be getting involved a lot more in meaning the whole DeFi sector jed hasn't been released just yet on mainnet on liquid once it is that's when i will get my tutorials out on how to use it all and some of the use cases in around why you would use protocols like this then looking into the nft side of things jpeg store have hinted yesterday that now people are reading into this that this means there could be a token coming for jpeg store generally when these types of things come out it is generally an airdrop for users of the platform people that have used the platform they will get an airdrop of the token we're waiting to see details on this so far this is all we have 
and lots of speculation in around that maybe by next week there might be more information that i can give you and if there is a process for getting the token or getting airdrops then i will bring that next friday in the nft marketplace space there is a new one on the block as well plutus.art you can see here in their first week they have over 2000 nfts listed on the smart contract and seems to be gaining a lot of traction doing things a bit different than jpeg store so i will dive a bit deeper into that one and cover it in another video another one then on the nft side is book.io and exciting news they have announced their app on the play store so if you are using an android phone you can now download the book.io app and use that for reading the books that you've bought through book.io and ios is coming soon generally ios can be a bit harder to get onto but maybe by next week i'll be able to say that they are then on ios then on to some other project updates we have an btc so their march here what they're going to do in march so in february they had the test night for ergo where you can wrap bitcoin and bring it onto the ergo blockchain and in march they're launching their public test net for cardano so you'll be able to now that's on test net once it goes to mainnet you can see mainnet launch for ergo is in march so in march you should be able to use your bitcoin to wrap it and then bring a version of that onto ergo some people are really happy about this other people are kind of very wary about this because when you use wrapped assets there's all the smart contract risk like getting involved in any platform if you look here this is how it works so you deposit your bitcoin you put it into their vault I have seen somewhere that it's going to be a multi-sig wallet that will be the vault initially and there will be other versions of this down the line then on the other side you will get out your wrapped bitcoin so cbtc would be for cardano so then you could use that on the cardano chain so we'll say you have your wrapped bitcoin on cardano you could use that as collateral on indigo or on liquid finance or any of the other DeFi protocols you could use your bitcoin as collateral and take out loans against that and then use that to get involved in some other DeFi plays or something else as well once that type of stuff comes out i will cover it a lot more in depth but i will always highlight the risk of getting involved with anything like this when you give up custody yourself wing riders have upgraded their chart so i've talked a few times about min swap and how good the charts are over there so it's great to see wing riders have updated theirs as well they've brought in trading view and also brought in some tvl metrics and stuff like that well so i'll cover that in another video but good to see they are continually bringing new features to the platform so sunday swap the results are in their first governance vote has concluded and this one was basically to yes we should use governance on on sunday swap and some of the rules and some of the main guidelines around what should be used for that so it has been passed and one of the first ones i'd love to see going in would be reactivating yield farming on sunday swap i think they've really missed that they've really fell down the pecking order the last few months because they haven't had that because people are moving to other dexes where they can provide liquidity and get a bit extra on top of that so potentially we could see sunday swap rising up a bit more i know they're working on v2 of their platform as well so it's probably one to keep an eye out on what they have coming over the next while iog are going to have a technical discord stage on march 16th to talk all about the sidechain toolkit answer questions that the community have so if you do have questions on that i'll leave a link to this one down below come over here and put in your questions for them and they'll be able to answer them on that stage it will be good to get more clarification around some of the workings of the sidechain toolkit or what types of sidechains are in the works l2s sidechains definitely becoming a bigger narrative we look at coinbase yesterday and announced build on base or announced base which is an ethereum layer 2 that offers a secure low cost developer friendly way for anyone anywhere to build decentralized apps so this is probably one i should dive into in a different video but i just wanted to highlight it here to show that even coinbase are starting up their own layer 2 so layer 2s side chains to a degree as well are definitely something that are going to get a lot bigger this year people aren't all building on the layer ones anymore they're looking to layer twos side chains as another alternative to building so we'll close out the video there i hope it's been useful to everyone i hope you got some value from it any improvements you'd like to see do let me know down below have a great weekend subscribe if you're new give the video a like share it out i do appreciate it talk to you soon